So congratulations, we have made it to the troubleshooting portion of the class. Uh, as I've talked about before, if we get into this discussion here and you guys are still a little bit lost, um, it's, it's normal, uh, especially if you're new to the refrigeration subject. So what I would suggest that you do, again, through this uh, magic of uh, this particular training venue, go back and look at some of the other lectures um, and then get some aha moments under your belt and then come on into the troubleshooting again. So uh, I'll be covering uh, how to apply the superheat and subcooling values that you've learned how to uh, get. And we're going to be talking about uh, some of the... Uh, the attributes of, of knowing what, what you're doing and being able to get that information and apply it to speed your troubleshooting techniques. So here's our friend again. Uh, again, we have our four basic uh, major components. We have our evaporator, compressor, condenser, expansion valve here. Um, and what we're going to talk about here is a balanced system. So whenever you're checking out a refrigeration system, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to fully understand what the problem is. Uh, usually it's going to be a lack of cooling. It's going to be um, a problem with it shutting off. Uh, there's there's going to be a multitude of, of issues. I highly recommend that you take a little bit of time before you get started uh, doing refrigeration troubleshooting, you take some time and you talk to the customer a little bit. And one of the, the, the biggest time savers you can ask a customer, especially if you're dealing with an air-cooled system, which is what we've been talking about here, we have airflow going across the evaporator here, and we have airflow going across the condenser. And the, before you ever get your gauges out and put your gauges on a refrigeration system, you want to ask the customer a question like, uh, hey, when was the last time you did a maintenance on your system? Because more often than not, you may think you have a problem with the refrigeration system, but you really don't. What it is, it's a problem with maintenance. So do yourself a favor, take a few minutes, and you want to make sure that your airflow going across your evaporator here and your condenser is, is clear. There's no restrictions because it will cause your readings to be really messed up if you don't have that covered. So what you want to do is you want to check your filter. Generally, um, resident, all, all systems, residential, commercials, even automobiles, they're going to have a, a filter that's going to be on the inlet air of the evaporator. So you want to go in there and make sure that filter's clean. And if, and if you can actually see the evaporator, sometimes that's kind of hard to do. You want to make sure that there's no buildup of uh, lint, dirt, mud, you name it, on here. All right, this is, that's really, really important. On the condenser side, same thing. Generally, you'll have a condenser that's located outdoors. Um, condensers are usually a lot simpler to see if they're clean or not. And um, you want to make sure that this inlet surface, especially here, is clear. Uh, there's no you know, leaves, debris, uh, uh, cottonwood tree, uh, you name it. Um, you want to make sure that the, this is not restricted. If you check those two things, especially in the spring, at the beginning of the season, you're going to probably um, be a hero. You'll probably run across uh, uh, that will that will uh, solve most of your problems right off the bat. The other thing that you want to do uh, before you get your gauges out is you want to give a good look over to uh, the refrigeration system. You want to look for leaks uh, generally in the condenser. If you see oil staining or anything like that on the on the aluminum coils, uh, that type of thing. So let's just say, for example, everything's good. You've checked your evaporator filter. You've checked your condenser. That's nice and clear. And um, you're still uh, not getting the refrigeration uh, performance that you expect, right? So now it probably wouldn't be a bad time to go ahead and put your gauges on and start taking your readings. So we covered in prior lessons on how to um, get your superheat from your evaporator and your subcooling from your condenser. 
And what you're looking for here is you want to you want to look for a reading on your superheat. The ideal reading is going to be between 8 and 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that is an ideal superheat reading. And also, surprisingly, or I should probably say not surprisingly, on the condenser side, the subcooling should be about the same. Now, before you take your superheat and subcooling readings, it's really important to make sure that that system has been running for at least five minutes before you actually take your readings. And the reason why is when this compressor starts, your fans start, um, it takes at least four to five minutes for this refrigeration system to become what we call stable. I've seen a lot of technicians, they'll, you know, they'll take their readings right off the bat when the compressor starts up and then they find out that the um, they didn't wait long enough and they went the entirely wrong direction thinking that they have a problem with their superheat subcooling um, and it they really don't okay so let it run for five minutes and then go ahead and check your superheat and subcooling and uh, and see what you come up with now in the next slide we're going to be talking about some really interesting stuff I'll be talking about um, some uh, what happens if it's not? What happens if your system is out of balance, the superheat and subcooling? Okay. Um, so what you're, what you're generally wanting to see is you want to see that your superheat and subcooling, as long as they fall between 8 and 12 degrees, that's good. Um, and then you want to see that the, uh, the difference between the subcooling and superheat is, is, um, is three to five um, degrees F is, is a good place to be. So for example, you know, if your um, if your superheat is 10, um, your and your subcooling is uh, 11 or 12, that's good. If your if your superheat is is 10 and you've got you know 25, 30 degrees um, subcooling, that's that's a problem. That's a system that's not in balance. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next slide and some more interesting information on the subject.